What's going on riders? Cody from Motorcycle MD, and today we'll be talking about the topic of brakes, going full circle back from an old video that I did when I replaced the pistons inside of the caliper because they were rusted. This is a little bit different story. This 1100 has front brakes, it's been sitting for a long time. I got the bike running, that's good to go. Tires are good, but when I started to ride the bike I noticed that it felt like the front tire was flat. Hard to push, really hard to push. Front caliper began to seize, lock up, not release from that brake rotor, which could cause major damage in the long run. It gets hot enough, the rotor gets warped, brake pads get glazed, and that's no longer usable. So I'm going to try to keep it as simple as possible. We're not going to be flushing the system. I have another video on that if you want to check that out on how to change out brake fluid. This one, we're just going to be taking the caliper off, and I'm going to show you guys how to clean the lands on the inside and what to look for. if it's starting to lock up or drag in any way. Simply jack the frame up on the right side, kickstand down, and it works as a great pivot point. And I can fully operate the bike up to a pretty nice angle to get this wheel spinning or to move this around, okay? Totally safe, it's not going anywhere. All right, so if I apply the front brake, hold it for about five seconds, just hold it, release it, and try to spin the tire, you can see that that eventually, you know, still just kind of, that should be spinning. Not a lot. You may hear some kind of wisp as you spin the tire, but it should not be that much resistance. You will always hear some kind of brake noise, but that, my friend, is not right. One thing I also noticed is how awesome it looks up top of here. Brake fluid has began to seep out of the piston right behind this brake lever. I'm not going to take care of that right now. Right now, all we're going to focus on is this caliper. Holy crap, that scared me. Woo! That'll pucker you up. I thought I just dropped the camera. And let's say you're dealing with a caliper that is just slam locked up. Maybe you found a barn bike or whatever. You know, the front brake rotor is just locked. All right, what you can do take a dead blow and just softly tap very lightly on that and that will kind of compress the pistons on the inside and that will get it moving again you can you can also pry on brake pad material or the metal portion of the backing of the brake pad to kind of push those pistons back in just a little bit to get that rotor moving this is just an, a serious scenario where maybe you just need to get the bike up on a trailer get it off the highway whatever that's a quick way or you, you, can, you can even use your knee and press on this caliper here and force those pistons back in. It'll make more sense once the caliper's apart. But just a little tip for you in case you have a very severely locked up brake and you cannot move the bike, that's how you get it rolling again. All right, so what we're going to do is get the old brake fluid out of there. There's a number of different ways to do that, um, but there's an easier way to do that as well. Okay, so, but before that, as usual, this video is brought to us by Gloveworks HD, one of my favorite nitro glove companies. Check them out. Link will be in the description below. They speak for themselves. Check them out. When it comes to cleaning out the caliper, what you really need to do is get the caliper by itself, isolate it. All right, get it off of the bike in a place where you can mess with it, look at it, spin it, and turn it. Because you, you have to clean some lands out that matter. Lands meaning just a place where a, a seal can sit and rest inside of its own little pocket. There's two of them. Actually four of them. All right. But before that, pro tip, what you're going to want to do is loosen everything up on the caliper. That way, when you get it off of the bike, you're not fighting with these bolts if you don't have an impact driver or something easy like that. It just makes it a real pain in the butt if you do not loosen everything up before you get started. Everything. So we have two mounting bolts here. I'm not too concerned about those. We'll leave those on front now. But we have this floating mount right here, this bolt here, this little pivot bolt. We have our drain right here that we'll obviously be going after because it's probably clogged with all kinds of great stuff. I can't even get the freaking cap off, you freaking, you stupid, you stupid rubber thing. 12 millimeter 
banjo bolt with crush washers, which you will need to replace because we'll, we will be removing this caliper off of the bike and isolating it. So two brand new crush washers, you got to replace them every time. You have eight, on this particular caliper, you have a six millimeter, eight millimeter head hold holding in these pins right here that pull the whole cal that pull the brake pads out. So we'll loosen that up. Everything. Pretty straightforward. So on this, all I'm gonna do is crack it loose and then retighten it because I don't want to let a bunch of brake fluid out. And I'll get to how to do all that once we get there, all right? But there's something that I do want you guys to do instead of what you think you should do. I'm actually just gonna go ahead and take this one off in the back. This is pretty self-explanatory. This kind of locks in and holds the two pins in. All right, so we loosen that up. We gotta loosen these up. All right, that's loose. This pivot right here. That's loose. Mm. Loose, loose, we gotta loosen this bleeder valve up. Trust me, you'll thank me once you get this caliper off and you're not fighting this stuff in your lap, all right? So before we get this caliper off, obviously you have a brake line that is attached to it. You could do this whole process with this attached to the brake line, absolutely. But I don't think you would do the best job that you probably could, and it's not the way that I do it as a, as a professional technician. If I loosen this banjo bolt, take it off, that brake fluid is gonna start to flow slowly out and drip onto here or into a pan or wherever. But the problem with that is that it, makes the job less efficient because when it comes to refilling, you're fighting it more to get the, all the air out because that whole line now fills up with air. So what you could do instead is pinch the line off here and that would cause it to just hold that pressure up above. That way, when you go to install this new caliper that's been clean and it's working perfectly and you go to start filling and bleeding out, there's only a little bit of pocket of air for it to be bled out. It's not like you're fighting air all the way up the line. So. The only way, the only reason that I would pinch a line is if I feel like it's in good condition, all right? Really old bikes where you can actually bend the hose and see it cracking and dry rotting. It's not a good idea to pinch it. If you wanna, honestly, the best thing to do is replace the line. And you don't wanna go pinching on it. But I don't wanna use pliers. I don't wanna use, I don't wanna use anything with teeth on it. Like I don't wanna use channel locks or vice grips. What I have right here, this is from Mac. It's a simple hose clamp. It's, it's just got one leg here, a soft rounded portion right here, and a little wing nut that just tightens it onto the clamp. I'm not trying to cut the line in half, people, okay? And like I said, visually inspect the brake line before you start pinching anything off. Just like I show in my other video about brake line flushing. It does not take a lot of pressure at all to hold the pressure. So now, before you disconnect your brake line, what I want you to do is take the caliper off and get the brake pads out. So here's this bolt that we had. See how nice it is when they're all loose? This will all be lubed back up when we go back together. Woo! And then you can drop it. Obviously if you want you can, you can replace these rubber seals. They are definitely available. They're about three bucks um, and it's just good to replace this stuff. What you're also going to check for is this right here. See this piston? This thing is slam this right here, this pivot right here should float back and forth, okay? Whenever you see brake pads that have been worn on one side, it's because the sliding mechanism for that caliper is not working correctly. The caliper is just, every time that you function on the rotor, it's clamping down on one side, clamping down on one side, and wearing in that one brake pad. It happens a lot on old 15, 1100, 1200 GLs, and you know, every, it can happen on any bike. But you see this one, this guy's got brand new brake pads in here, brand new. But if he would have started functioning this and I just let it go, you know, his brake pad would have been shot. And that's a major reason why it could also be not releasing from the rotor. Okay, it's just slam lock. So what I would have to do is either, is just use your brain. How would you get that out? Using a hammer on one side, kind of tapping this and see if you can't force it the other way, get it moving, heat. You know, there's a bunch of different ways that you can achieve getting this out. This one is really, really locked up. But right now, let's get these pins out, out of the back. Sometimes they don't come out that easy. Uh, I need a pair of pliers. Actually, nope, I can use this pin right here. If you push against the pads with your thumb here, it will take tension off this pin and it should come right out, all right? 
Okay, brand new brake pads, that's awesome. I don't, I don't have to tell me these new brake pads, they're good. You'll also be polishing up these pistons so the brake pads can slide back and forth on them. So, what I want to do now before I take brake fluid out of the system is I, I need to get these pistons pretty far out. Um, so I'm not fighting them once, because if I were to just disconnect this line and have this caliper in hand and these, and these pistons right here are as far in as they are, I'm going to be fighting to get them out if they're really, really seized and locked up. Okay, the one thing you got to know is that fluid cannot be compressed. It's, it will leak or bust something before it gets compressed. So leaving this brake line solid and full of fluid, I can push these pistons out with my thumb. If I use compressed air, let's say I take this line off, and I'm like, well crap, how do, well, how do I get these out now? Use a pair of pliers and jack them all up? No. Sometimes you can use compressed air on the other side and just hit it with pff, a whole 100 PSI of, of compressed air. Hopefully that will push them out. Make sure that you protect this entire thing. What I like to do is put either a towel right here, if you're going to use the air compressed way. Put a towel right here, cover this whole thing with a towel right because brake fluid is going to go crazy and then hit it with air and it'll go boom boom hopefully hopefully it'll do that and shoot the pistons out i've had a very bad experience with that brake fluid went everywhere it was not nice so before you do that pro tip let's pump them out with the brake lever all right so only one's coming out so i want to block this one something easy like that my little driver so i can push the other one out Okay, honestly, if you wanted to, you can pump them to the point where, they're, where they just pop out, but... Alright, so that, that's pretty far out right there, okay? So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and use my hose clamp and clamp this off like what I was talking about earlier, and then remove that bolt right there. Now, like I said, some brake fluid will come out just of what's residual in there and, and just the pressure that was built up. Center caliper down. There's one crush washer, there's another, and we can pretty much just let this brake hose hang with a rag or a bowl underneath it. And now we have our caliper, okay? There's brake fluid just kind of hanging out right there. We, obviously you can tip that over and drain it all out, which is what we'll do, but we still need to get these pistons out. And I'm gonna show you a really nice tool to use to get those out the rest of the way. All right, so like I was saying before, we gotta get this brake fluid out. If you could grab something, something super simple like this, you can actually just drain most of this stuff out. But the majority's gonna come out when you pull these pistons off. And these right here are some reverse pliers, okay? I think these work amazing. I'll put a description below. But I'm just gonna grab the inside of this piston. I now have full control of it. And I can just spin this and pull it out, okay? Is where all the fluid's gonna come out right there. Grab this piston, do the same exact thing. Pull them both out. Let that drain for a second. Now what I'll do, I'm just gonna take this over to the sink, wash it, soap and water, maybe a little brass brush, and just kind of clean this whole caliper up, soap and water, get all the brake fluid out, so I'm not messing with the brake fluid anymore. All right, so as we get started to tear into our caliper, we need some tools, right? This is just so we can maybe work on this stuck piece here. I have some miscellaneous picks and uh, small tools that I've made that I can show you guys and maybe it might help us out. Obviously, we're working with brakes, we need some brake contact cleaner. And I'm gonna show you a really nice trick with that stuff when it comes to cleaning brake parts. Steel wool and some Scotch-Brite, all right? Scotch-Brite's gonna help us out a lot. Uh, the goal is to minimize scoring on the inside of these calipers and Scotch-Brite helps with that. You do need 100%, but if you're facing the problem like we're facing, is some new seals for the inside. Okay, these are rubber seals, and they are a specific type of rubber seal that it's almost like a square circle, if that makes sense. So you have this, I would consider this like the brake fluid or the, uh, the spring seal. This would be more of like a dust seal, but it does help with that spring action. But again, it's square, kind of like this one. Now the reason why this is square is because it's sitting inside of a pocket. And long story short, the piston sits inside of this seal, okay? And as that piston functions, this seal flexes, okay? So piston inside and it flexes and allows this to kind of 
go forward and then go back again and it kind of return. It works like a spring almost, or like a, or like a retention ring, all right? All the part numbers and stuff will be in the, the description below, as well as every tool that I'll be using, okay? So what I do want to do first is get this spring seat out for the pads, and it's sitting inside of a pocket on this side. So you want to pull this side up first. Just using this little pick to guide its way. There we go. Okay, we can clean this all up with steel wool. Just a little quick tip. Obviously, we're going to be using contact cleaner. All right, you don't want it in your eye. And the cool thing about contact brake cleaner when it comes to brake fluid is it makes it dry up and turn into a crust really quickly when you're dealing with it when it's been corroded inside of a caliper. And this is just a side rant. What's really cool is like my, my wife's a dental hygienist, okay? When you have calculus on your teeth, it's kind of hard to see because of your saliva. If you have buildup inside the, the brake caliper, it's kind of hard to see because there's brake fluid all over the place. And everything looks wet. As soon as, they, as soon as my wife uses air and sprays it on a tooth, it actually makes the calculus turn bright, bright white. That's where they know how to scrape, how to uh, scale, you know, all, all that stuff and get all that crap off of your teeth because you are disgusting and you don't floss. Like me. So when I, use cal when I use contact cleaner, it works exactly the same way. And stuff may look fine right now, but when I pop these seals out, which we'll do right now, can I get, get a little pick and go right underneath there and just work it up. There's one. And when I get those up, these are the lands inside that you want to deal with. Okay, they are square lands, so they kind of fit the seal. And you want to hit with contact cleaner. Contact cleaner is going to expose and dry everything up for you so you can start scraping at it. This does not look as bad as most would. But there is some crust and some buildup stuff going on down inside of here that I want to take care of. So without ruining my camera, I'm just going to put some a rag over top of here and use my contact cleaner and kind of spray inside. And once this is all dried up, you can use compressed air to speed it up. But the goal is a lot of times when you have really, really bad stuck pistons is you will have a crust or a nice flaky buildup inside of these lands. And this is where your tools will come into play. The goal is to not score and damage the inside of the land as much as possible, obviously. You want to keep it as smooth and work in working fashion. But in order to get certain angles of this, you're going to have to use something metal, obviously, and get on the inside of the corners, up top of here that you can't even see without a mirror, and all the way around. And you're going to keep working this until you no longer are getting debris and dust and crud out of this caliper. Some of them are really, really bad. On the older bikes, some of them are not so bad. This one's got a little bit of buildup. I, I, I took a really cheap flathead screwdriver and bent the end of it. That way I can get a little angle on it and get right up on the corners and get that crust out of there. Okay, I'm not using a lot of pressure, just kind of scraping it very easily all around. You can use it down inside of here, like here's some right there, right down the pit. That was building up just behind the piston, which probably wouldn't allow it to go all the way back. What do you think? So that's where you're going to spend all of your time, all right? To keep scoring to a minimum, you can use some Scotch-Brite, cut a little piece, like so. Use this down inside. Nice, smooth mirror finish on the inside. You can use steel wool for that as well. Remember, all the fibers are, will start to collect inside of the caliper. You're going to clean, make sure you clean all that crap out of there. Shove it down in one of those lands and really just spin the brake caliper like this. That way, you know, again, minimizing scoring on these lands. Sometimes it's, a, it's inevitable. Some really, really bad calipers, I've had to work with that thing forever to get everything out. And just when I thought I was done, I hit a little spot or a pocket up top that I, I couldn't see on the inner wall. And then, boom, a whole chunk of crap comes out, and now I'm doing it all over again. All right, so just make sure it's all nice and perfect and clean. If it is not perfect and clean, it will not work right. Okay, you'll still have the same exact problem. It just won't be as bad as it was before. 100% efficiency, people. That's the standard I'm holding you to. All right, but yeah, continue to clean this crap out. And we're going to pop this drain off. And we're going to clean the threads up on this as well. And make sure that the hole is obviously clear, and you can get brake fluid in and out of there. All right, so that's what I'm gonna do. Spend my time doing that. See you guys in a sec. All right, so once the lands have gotten as clean as you want them, mine are really clean. 
I can feel when my glove off. That they're really, really smooth on the inside of the bore, and all that is nice and clean. No more debris. Caliper's pretty much good. This is going to be a problem that I might need to face without you guys. But actually, you know what? I just moved it. So what? I, what I try to do is take one side of this seal off and keep forcing it out. Look at that, that thing is rusted, man. This poor seal. I'm gonna grab a little socket. Something that's just, just big enough. I can also do something like this. All, all we're trying to do is try to get it out of there. This was definitely a majority of our problem. So if they're available, you can replace it. If they're not available, you can, you can reuse this. I'm gonna use a wire wheel um, and clean it all up. Get some brand new seals for this thing. Okay, because these, these are all junk. I'm gonna clean the inside bore of this. There's probably some grime inside of these lands here. And then re-grease it with some brand new grease. Now keep in mind that when you're doing brake pads or any kind of brake service, these things are so crucial. You gotta lube these up regardless to avoid stuff like that happening, all right? That's part of the brake service. That's part of a, of a professional brake job is making sure that all this stuff is moving freely and you don't deal with, you know, brake pads wearing on half or not floating, all that kind of stuff. But the easiest way to put the new seals in and put this in, which is kind of a tricky thing to do, is to put one seal in first, okay, on one side, push, grease it up, push this piston all the way in, past it, like that. Put the other seal in and then push this back kind of in circular motions. And you'll understand what I mean when you actually do it because you'll be fighting the seal and keep wanting to pop out and this, that, and the other, you'll be fighting it. Just slowly push this back in. Both of them should be seated and then boom, it should function nicely. This one does not. What we can do is continue to clean up the parts that we need to clean. You need to go after these pistons, all right? Super easy to do. I love these, this tool here because I can grab it and not worry about it. But clean all the junk off first. And this is where our steel wool will come into play. Take the steel wool, grab the piston. Do that to both of them. And every time you do a brake job, if you're not taking the pistons all the way out, that's fine. But you'll, you know, it'll collect some dirt from the lip. Pull the piston out for, far enough to where you see a nice clean portion of it, and then you're gonna polish it up with the same stuff. You, you, you can use uh, steel wool, you can use a brass brush, whatever you wanna use. Make sure that you clean it with compressed air contact cleaner before you push the pistons back into the caliper, okay? You can clean up this as well, because obviously the brake pads will be, one of the brake pads, the one that floats, will be sliding back and forth on this spring pad. So you gotta make sure that this is nice and cleaned up before you complete your job. But I'm not gonna bore you guys with this, with doing the entire thing, because uh, the rest is, I mean, it's it's reverse order of removal. Obviously, I'm gonna, I don't have the parts I need on hand right now with me to do this. So I have to grab those parts later and that's something that I can do later and you can do later. Um, but what I will show you guys is putting the seals back in and reinstalling these pistons. So once this piston is all clean, there's no debris on it whatsoever. There's actually still some crud on the bottom of this. Grab this one, this one's got some too, I missed it. I missed it. If these pistons have any pits or they're rusted or anything like that, Try to really try to replace them, guys. Don't be that cheap. You are talking about a brake system that should that could potentially save your life. So there's nothing to joke around about. Installing the new rings. Everything is clean inside of here. I use compressed air, make sure everything's there's no dirt or debris. The way I feed them in is pretty simple. I kind of squeeze it like this. Feed one end in. You can kind of wrap this, work in a corner and at a time, and then it will just kind of slop into place. You kind of pull it back in and out if you need to to get it seated right, but it should sit you know, pretty flush all the way inside of there. Same with this other one. Work one side in. All right, perfect. Now there's two ways you can do this. You can use a really, really thin, thin grease if you want to and just line this rubber with it, it's a little silicone grease or something like that. Or what you can use is brake fluid because these things are gonna be surrounded by brake fluid the rest of their life. So you can use just a little bit of brake fluid. Line the inside, line the inside. Grab my piston, 
sanitary, straight in, seat it all the way down, straight in, seat it all the way down, okay? That's going to be perfect. I'm just to clean the brake fluid, the, the, that residual left over from your finger and everywhere around the caliper, but that's good right there. If you want to put a new O-ring on your bleed valve, you can go ahead and do that and reinstall it. The goal is to try to seal this caliper off from any further contamination or, you know, miscellaneous parts or pieces. It'd probably be better if I went into the right hole, obviously. If I'm going to just keep trying to screw this in, you know, no one's going to tell me nothing because I'm just realizing why the heck won't it screw in when it should be going into here. Good. That's it, guys, right there. That whole slide mechanism, those pins and stuff that we were talking about, you're gonna grease all that up. You really don't want any external grease hanging out around the caliper because grease on brakes in general will collect dust, will collect brake pad material, will collect all kinds of crap. So to keep everything as dry as possible is key. Okay, no grease hanging outside of seals when it comes to that slide or anything like that. You wanna keep everything clean, dry, and grease everything internalized, if that makes sense. And another note, when you go back to install this, once you've cleaned it all up, obviously this one's pretty self-explanatory. It's got that one uh, pin here that goes into the caliper and you kind of work it down. Some of them don't have that. And what I want you to pay attention to is two very important things. So you have a big slide base here, right? So the brake pad can slide on this quite a bit. This one does not. It's got two little feet right there and there that would potentially keep a brake pad from not sliding that part would be we would consider this the fixed side of the brake caliper right the fixed side this is the moving side because as the pistons move and more and more brake pad material is mo is used pistons will come out and work their way and pushing that brake pad all the way over so we want the slide portion on the piston side of the caliper. Does that make sense? I would use these same techniques for any caliper that I face, especially when it comes to Honda stuff. All right. So that's really it, guys. Not a lot to it. I don't think there really is a need to go back together. You guys, I think, can figure that out from the way it was. On this one, it's super simple. Couple quick tips. Of course, like I said, you're gonna wanna replace these crush washers. When you go to install this, all right, so put the caliper back on, put this hose back on, you're gonna this system is really awkward because the angle of the reservoir is at a really ugly tilt. You gotta get the tilt of the reservoir as flat as possible. So on some bikes it's easier than others and you might need to take the, the whole master cylinder up top off and kind of hold it and pump it. I don't know. Sometimes a buddy is very helpful to have around. But this one, when I go to reinstall, I tighten everything down and everything is straight. I'm just gonna barely loosen this clamp up and using the brake lever, slowly wait until I can push through the resistance here. Once I can push through the resistance there, this caliper is gonna bleed out so fast, guys. It's gonna be so helpful. This is a huge tip for you guys. Okay, just, what all I'm doing is just adding that resistance and I'm releasing the resistance as I'm putting pressure on the line until I can collapse that brake lever and push the fluid past this. This allows no air to come up whatsoever, nothing to contaminate, or no air to rise or anything. All right, it's awesome. Obviously with the bleeder valve open on the caliper and you start to see no more air come out, you can go ahead and release this, this clamp and just bleed the whole system through. Keep pumping, I'd say at least, at least four reservoirs full of brake fluid out of the system, depending on how big your reservoir is. Some bikes, it's very small. Keep pumping it out until it's nice and crystal clean. Obviously clean up all these metal parts. All these pins and stuff, try to keep them greased internally. All right, um, especially when they're sliding in and out of things like this, right? I don't want grease hanging out around this seal because it will collect all that dirt and grime. Also make sure that your banjo bolt is clean. But that's it guys, use Loctite on the bolts, keep everything nice and tight, use torque specs. Of course when it comes to brakes, you don't wanna screw anything up like that. So thank you guys so much for checking out this video. I hope it brought some kind of insight and value to you. As you may or may not know, Motorcycle MD Inner Circle is alive and well. We're actually getting ready to dive into a 1970 350 motor teardown. I'm super pumped about it. Going through the top end, putting some aftermarket parts in and making it hum and sing just like it did when it came out of the box. Hopefully a little bit better. 
But before you go, seriously, grab the free troubleshooting cheat sheet that I want to give you guys just for watching this video. It's a little cheat sheet that I put together to help you diagnose certain troubleshooting issues on your bike. Check it out. It's helped a lot of people out. And of course, follow me on Facebook and Instagram forward slash The Motorcycle MD. Thank you guys so much for your time, your energy, watching this video. Cody from Motorcycle MD, giving you guys quality tips and tricks for your next build, possibly your new daily rider. I'll see you guys next time. Later.